Hi friends, I am Sravana and welcome back to my channel Sparkling Future. Before starting with today's topic, I request all of you to subscribe to my channel and also please like, share, comment and hit the bell icon for the latest video notifications. Thank you. Friends, today we discuss about split columns based on ranges in PySpark. Let's see the sample data here. This is the sample data that we are going to work today. So if you see the uh, data, it has the item number, item name and price of the product and the start date is from this to this. So start date, end date. We have two columns. So what exactly does this mean is for the price of the apple, 250 will be applicable from 1st January to 4th January. Then again, from 5th January to 8th January, this is the cost. You might have seen something kind of, some something like this kind of data and you may need to split the same, same row into multiple columns. For example, for calculating the price of the, uh, for any particular product, you may need to know what is the price of the current day. But in the input file, you are getting this kind of data. Means in a single row, you are getting the range of the dates for which the item price is applicable. So you may need to split that into multiple rows. Which means that, see from 1st to 4th, 1st, 2nd, 3rd and 4th. For these 4 days, the price should be calculated as per 250 rupees given in this column. And from 5th to 8th, then you need to consider this price. So for, for uh, doing that kind of row range, row level calculations, we need the date as, uh, as a separate column in the row so that you can perform some easy calculations. So for that, we will see how to uh, split this single row into multiple rows and um, then we will see, okay, what are the complexities and how can we resolve all those? We will see in today's video. So I am just uploading the file, whatever I just showed you, right? The same file. This is the e uh, items date split.csv. equal to true and this is the one our data frame is created with whatever data we have inserted now let's create the result df which should contain the rows with uh, actually the, the days with split of this range. As per this range, this, it should split the same row into multiple columns. So for that, what we have to do is, what is this data frame items dot data frame dot and actually we have to import some functions as well, right? So first let me import that here and then come back to the same dot SQL import functions as f, okay? Now, Let's create the result data frame as items data frame dot. We need a new column with the date, correct? So what is the rate? Maybe we can just say current date, okay? Or any any name you want, you can use that. So for this, we, uh, here I am using the, I am utilizing the expression function for sending, I mean giving the instruction of taking the sequence of days here. So I am using f dot expr. Inside that, I am again using the explode function so that the same row will be exploded into multiple rows based on the sequence number that we are inputting to the explode function. Got it? So now, write this explode and we have to give a sequence as input to the explode function. So what is the sequence that we are going to give? We have to give the range of two dates. One is the start date and one needs the end date. So, because those are strings now, I have not used any schema in the above, right? It should be in the dates. You can just print schema to see the data type of that. So, it must be the string. That is, that's why we have to cast that to, to date. So, here I am saying that 
take two date of start date. Uh, this uh, sequence takes uh, usually three parameters. First is the uh, starting of the range, ending of the range, and then what is the step in which you wanted to skip. For example, we need in the same sequence, right? So here we will be using the number one. If you want the subsequent days or something like that, then you can give two. If you wanted to skip more numbers, five or ten, whatever it is, the steps you can mention as the third parameter. Okay. Now similarly, two date of end date okay so this here you can see the uh, this one right the column names the same thing i am mentioning here okay if you have some from date or to date you have to mention the same inside this to date function okay and now here we have to mention because these are dates right we have to mention the interval interval one day okay so that every day it will it will take it as a sequence it will create a sequence it will explode it and then it will give us the output so now let's print this result df so if you see here the result data frame for the item number 101 apple from the start you can actually skip the start and end date okay you can just do select if you take the current date for first second third and fourth the price is 250 rupees the similar way we had this uh, this uh, dates right from fifth right so for that what we can do is we can use the fifth okay. let me do show 40 okay do it here okay so here if you see for fifth date okay let me take that select so that it will be easier for you to understand okay what date we are given current date right item number what is the column names that we have given i number i name and current date yeah so now if you see here for you can sort it okay if you want you can try that out so for for this but i okay, will not select the price of that so for apple from first to fourth the price is 250 and when you do the uh, sorting then this apple will go above then you will be clearly able to see this from 5th for the current date 5th to 8th you can see the apple price is 225 similarly for banana from 2nd to 5th okay 2nd to 5th it is 100 rupees and yeah 5th, 5th and 6th it is 90, 90 rupees if you see here the date is actually overlapping here so what you can do you can have a filter to pick up let to pick up the latest timestamp or based on the index number because when you get the input right it might be having most of the cases we will be having the timestamp you can use that particular timestamp to pick up the latest data so that we can ignore this kind of overlappings or you can use the rank function based on some other calculation like maybe timestamp or even you can have the indexed column and whichever is the latest you pick that up okay in that case what will happen first let's say if this record was already there and then we have received this particular record in the input right then based on the timestamp because this is the latest one we'll pick this up okay with that if we can ignore this kind of overlappings i mean we can resolve that overlappings okay so this way we can see now what is the input that we have given is only one row for apple from one to four and another row for the same apple from fifth to eighth but here if you can see the output 
we have generated multiple column multiple rows so that for every current date that we are using we are having uh, the prices very clearly so that we can perform any kind of row level operations okay now this is with the dates let's say you have uh, what is that let's say you have the integers like this i have taken another uh, what is uh, another ranged file if you see here uh, i mean i don't have exact use case of where you will do this but actually you can just do uh, just uh, this is typical technical example i have taken you can apply this to any functional way okay so here let's say 1 and 2 the range is there 1 2 4 1 2 5 this kind of ranges i have taken okay now let's upload this file and see how to deal with the dates uh, sorry in the integers because in the previous example we have seen how to deal with the dates correct because these are the dates what we have done in the sequence function explode function will explode the row single row into multiple columns based on the input that we are giving usually it will take arrays or structs or sequence such kind of uh, uh, what to say uh, this kind of list kind of okay so uh, that's why uh, here we have used the sequence here as input to the explode function so this explode function is the one which is actually splitting your row into multiple columns now here if you take right we are using the dates here so we have used interval of one day one day so that the sequence function can understand that we are getting the dates and because of that reason we have casted also here the start date and end date to two date function okay now when you are practicing do the print schema of this items df to see why we are doing these two dates to date you will clearly understand now let's uh, take this particular example what is this emp range file let's upload the file Okay, let me put range df. Okay, anything. Header is true. Range df dot. First, we'll do print schema. I want to show that how it will take. So, if you take by default, it takes all the strings. That is what I'm telling, I was telling in the previous example. So, what we have to do either we have to cast the data type like this or we can apply the schema while working in the production it's always better to apply the schema uh, instead of casting when whenever you are using it because it will be like a global set so that the schemes the same schema will be applicable in the throughout your program so let's create some schema here okay my schema equal to let me import the types So for creating schema, what all things we need is struct field, struct type and integer that we have, right? And then we have string type, correct? How I will come, to, how I know about uh, the types that what types to take is here. If you see here, this is integer and this is string and these two are also integer. In case if you have decimal type or float type or date type, you can just do the same way. Like the sim, the similarly you can. Uh, import it and then you can use it so now let's create the struct type okay and here you have to use the struct field and say first one is what emp id right emp id and this is integer type nullable equal to true if you want it that it should be non-null, then you can make it as false as well. Then second one is emp name. And this is a string type. And third, third one is uh, start number. Integer track. then n number and 
integer type is true. Now we have to apply the schema here, right? We will have another option here saying schema and pass that my schema. Whatever here we have created, right? My schema. You pass the same inside this schema. Okay. Now let's execute. If you see here earlier we, we had string everywhere, right? Now we can see EMP ID is integer, EMP name is string, start number and end numbers are integers. Okay. Now, now we have the data frame ready. So now what will happen? Result data frame equal to range data frame dot with column, some column. Okay. Based on your requirement, you can give the name and here we have to use the explode function. So how we can use the explode function is here I am using the expression function to use that. You can use directly explode if you have the uh, sequence or struct or map or any kind of thing already ready for you. Okay. So now here I am generating that expression and then inputting. Okay. So because of that reason I am using the f dot expression here. And within that ex uh, expression what we have to do is we have to use the explode function and to the explode function we have to send the sequence sequence uh, as the input and in the sequence what I am saying is we have start number column end number column and uh, one is me I am giving that one uh, is the step up how many steps we wanted to do that like we want the same sequence to be followed so I am giving one here if you want some uh, skipping two numbers then you can try with two here by giving it here as well okay now print it sdf dot show now if you can see here for start number and end number are one and two for the apple right so it created two rows okay and for banana it's one and four so it has created four columns and one and five for carrot so it has created five rows here. You can see here, right? Five rows. So this way we can split the single row into multiple rows based on the given ranges. Okay. Hope this is useful to you friends. Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe to my channel for more interesting learnings. If you have any use cases that you are going to solve and if you are facing any issues, please message me. Thank you friends.